You're watching The Legal Breakdown. So Glenn, a few days back, Trump threatened the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Mark Milley, suggesting that he was guilty of treason and that the penalty of such a crime had historically been death. Now, first of all, there are going to be these Trump defenders who will come out and say, well, he didn't directly threaten Milley with death. But obviously, between us, it's very clear what the suggestion was. So how would that defense, that, that Trump defense, hold up in a courtroom that he didn't really threaten him with death? It would be laughed out of court because one plus one equals two. Here's what Trump said. Trump said, General Mark Milley has engaged in treason. Back in the day, the punishment for treason is death. Guess what the punishment for treason is today? Let's look at the big, ugly blue book of federal laws, the United States Code. Let me just read one sentence from the crime of treason. Whoever, owing allegiance to the United States, levies war against them or adheres to their enemies, giving them aid and comfort within the United States or elsewhere, is guilty of treason and shall suffer death. So Donald Trump can't hide behind, well, I said, you know, back in the day, the punishment for treason is death because Brian, as we sit here today, the authorized punishment for treason is death. So let's be crystal clear. Donald Trump said about one of the witnesses against him that he committed treason, which means he should suffer death. That to me feels like threatening, harassing, or intimidating a witness. To that point, can you speak on the gag order that was just requested by Jack Smith in the DC trial and whether a comment like this could have any impact? Yeah, so it feels like with this latest intimidation of a witness, you know, putting out the call to his supporters, just like he did on January 6th, you know, General Milley committed treason. You know what that means, right? Th this is not a thinly veiled threat. This is a direct, dangerous threat against General Milley. And so the gag order that was requested by Jack Smith was a pretty narrowly tailored prohibition of Donald Trump's speech and his posts, you know, prohibiting him from harassing, intimidating, threatening, endangering witnesses, judges, prosecutors, jurors, or any of their family members, and also prohibiting him from saying things that were designed to poison the jury pool. Now, that, that request, that those restrictions have not yet been imposed by Judge Tanya Chutkin, who's the presiding judge over Trump's J6 trial in DC, and Donald Trump's lawyers just filed their reply pushing back. So this litigation is still ongoing. But remember, when Donald Trump was arraigned in federal court in Washington, DC, I was there at the time. The judge at that point, the magistrate judge, admonished him not to say or do anything that could be perceived as threatening or harassing witnesses. So in my view, he has clearly already violated prior admonitions by the court, but now they're being formalized and we'll get hopefully some kind of a, a narrowly tailored limitation on Donald Trump's speech and posts. But it really does feel like with this threat against Milley, he has already violated prior court orders. So the only thing left to do, Brian, is issue what's called a show cause order, which is when a judge orders a defendant to appear and show cause as to why he shouldn't be revoked on pretrial release and detained pending trial for harassing, threatening and intimidating witnesses. And so now, given this update, what do you expect to see, given the fact that we're now litigating this issue of a gag order? You know, there's a really interesting question developing here in this litigation. I read Donald Trump's lawyers filing opposing the gag order. We call it a gag order for shorthand, but it really is just a narrowly tailored limitation on Trump's speech and posts. And they basically said, look, you can't stop Donald Trump from saying anything he wants to say because it's his First Amendment right to do it. Well, there are a couple of replies, and I expect we're going to see some pretty, you know, hotly contested litigation on these very issues. The first reply is that, OK, so let me get this straight, Donald Trump's lawyers. You're saying he's entitled to threaten, harass, intimidate and endanger witnesses with his speech now that he is on pretrial release pending, you know, criminal trials in four cases. Is that what you're saying? And then they're going to have to ratchet it back and acknowledge, no, he's not allowed to do those things. Well, if he's not allowed to do those things, he can be ordered not to do those things. You know, there's a second area that I think we're going to see 
raised by Jack Smith's prosecutors. When you are on pretrial release in a felony case, guess what? Your rights are reduced, all of your rights. What do I mean by that? Well, a judge can order you to surrender your passport. A judge can't order anybody to surrender their passport. But if you're on pretrial release in a felony case in federal court, a judge can order you to surrender your passport. A judge can order you not to leave the District of Columbia. That might otherwise violate the Fourth Amendment as an unreasonable restraint on your movement. It might violate the equal protection of the laws, your ability to travel interstate. But if you're on pretrial release, all of your rights, including your constitutional rights, are reduced. Think about one of Donald Trump's foot soldiers in the insurrection, the, so, the leader of the so-called Proud Boys, Enrique Tarrio. He was on pretrial release on January 6th. He had been ordered not to come in to D.C. People might say, oh, my goodness, that violates his rights. No, those are appropriate conditions that can be set on by a court when you are on release in a felony prosecution. You can be ordered to submit to weekly drug testing. You can be ordered to have a curfew and not leave your house after a certain time at night. You can be ordered on GPS monitoring. You can be ordered into detention pending trial. So for Donald Trump's lawyers to say his First Amendment rights um, cannot yield even one iota when he's on pretrial release, yes, they can. He can be ordered not to harass the witnesses against him. He can be ordered not to say things that will poison future jury pools. So frankly, you know, the, the, the filing that Donald Trump's lawyers just submitted to the court, it's basically 25 pages of what reads like a combination of an extended tweet and a Trump campaign ad. It's a bunch of nonsense. Okay, and let's end with this. One of the conditions, obviously, that you just spoke about is a revocation of his pretrial release, meaning that he would be detained pending trial. Now, you and I have spoken at length in these episodes about how his actions constantly justify that because he keeps violating these terms of release. Why isn't this happening? And, and I know our viewers are getting upset too because the rationale is there for this revocation of his pretrial release to, to, to jail him pending trial and he just seems to keep getting away with it. Yeah, I wish I had a good answer to why he has not been ordered detained pending trial. You know, as a former career prosecutor, I had to make the weighty decision day after day and case after case, uh, whether to ask that a defendant be detained pending trial. The reason that is such a weighty decision is because I know that that would be the prosecutor, me requesting that somebody's liberty interest be denied before they were ever convicted of a crime. But the law is structured such that if you are a danger to the community or you're a flight risk and the prosecutor can show by clear and convincing evidence that one of those two things is true, then the law provides you should be detained pending trial. Then the second circumstance where people can and often are detained pending trial is when a judge originally decides to put them on release with conditions of release, like don't harass, intimidate, or threaten the witnesses, and the defendant does precisely that, they should be revoked on release because they have proved that they are unwilling or unable to abide by the conditions set for them by the court. I wish I had a good answer, Brian, to why he hasn't been revoked, because the evidence shows that he should have been revoked 10 times over. I think the reality is because we are on this maiden voyage of prosecuting a former president of the United States for his crimes, judges are loath to take that dramatic step of being the first judge to order a former president jailed pending trial. I do think it's inevitable because I do think Donald Trump will continue to harass, intimidate, and threaten witnesses. He will continue to endanger everybody that is in the pursuit of holding him accountable for his crimes. And I think it's inevitable that at some point, some judge is gonna say, I have to step up, I have to protect the community, I have to protect the witnesses, I have to protect the integrity of the very criminal justice system seeking to hold Donald Trump accountable. And I'm revoking him on release and I'm ordering him detained pending trial. I feel like that day is an inevitability. 
And let's finish off with this. We had spoken about the gag order that's working its way through the D.C. trial. Uh, what's the update on that? When can we expect uh, a ruling from Judge Shutkin on whether that gag order is imposed or not? Yeah, so Trump's, Trump's lawyers just filed their reply. And Jack Smith's team has, I think, a few days to file their response to Trump's lawyers' reply that they just filed. And then I assume she's going to take the matter up in fairly short order probably have an oral argument on it in the coming days. And I have to believe she will issue her ruling very promptly. So I would say in the next week or two, we will probably have what I believe will be a constitutional narrow prohibition on certain dangerous um, posts and speech by Donald Trump. Okay, and we'll obviously keep everybody up to date on that as soon as we have more news there. So if you want to stay on top of this stuff, make sure to subscribe. The links are right here on the screen. I'm Brian Tyler Cohen. And I'm Glenn Kirshner. You're watching The Legal Breakdown.